Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Zone Star State Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Ishmael Johnson. And Ish, today we are joined by Karen Aston, UTSA women's basketball head coach. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? Doing well. Doing really well. well. A little, yeah. a little tired. Uh, been at football <laughs> practice today, but um, yes, you're in there. Always ready. Always happy to come on and talk basketball. Um, of last year. UTSA y'all were um one of our favorite teams to watch um and obviously the close games we'll get into all that later on but just you could see y'all's team fight you could see the rebounding the defense your identity really come through um Mm -hmm. in your team and so that's why we enjoyed watching it so much and that's why we wanted to have you on again just because like we did last year hey I appreciate that a lot yeah I have enjoyed my team so i'm glad i'm glad other people did too for sure <laughs> um last year um and ended the year 13 and 19 overall 9 and 11 in conference um the best conference record at utsa since 2016 2017 um to get to nine wins um was really impressive and we'll talk about the way you ended the season as well um ish where do you want to what do you want to start yeah i guess i mean well i guess for my first question, it's kind of at the beginning because me and Bruni kept track of, obviously, we talked to you about Jordan Jenkins and Kira White last year coming in and kind of changing a lot of the 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 ceiling for this program. And you guys got off to a rough start in non-conference, but me and Bruni were kind of like, I don't know, we felt like we were kind of like flying the flag of like, this team's a good team, right? And like yeah. certain things, the ball wasn't falling the right way in some situations, but we were like, constantly week after week saying this team is going to hit a stride whether that's conference or wherever um you know did you kind of have that feeling too how how was kind of I guess around mid-December you know when things aren't necessarily going your way on the scoreboard what was kind of the message in the locker room to your coaches and to your to your players yeah I think it was exactly what you guys hit on and I you know you observed um correctly I mean it was a team that had eight newcomers you know and and five of those eight were true freshmen So, you know, it's that's a lot of freshmen if you had all returners coming back but them. Uh, So I think the combination of of that many new ones just took it took a lot of time. I mean, it wasn't anything that I thought we could rush. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, they probably learned some lessons about, you know, how you approach the summer. What do you do in your pickup in the summer? And you know, how do you build some of that camaraderie before the coaches ever even, you know, really crank up in, in September and October. And so I think that had we had a different approach, um, maybe we would have, you know, pulled out some of those games that were so close in non-conference play. And then again, you know, we also, we had a tough non-conference schedule. I mean, we yeah. went to Vegas, um, you know, played a, played a really good St. John's team, uh, got beat three points. Uh, but I think the turning point really was towards the end of, of December, you know, a, as we were about to take the Christmas break. Uh, we played at Houston. You know, they were much more experienced than we were. Uh, guards were really, really good. I mean, they make you turn the ball over a lot and play a, a helter-skelter style. And uh, we were down significantly at halftime and came back and took that game into overtime. And I think it was really good to, even though we didn't win, uh, we sort of were like, okay, you know, we we could be a good team. And I, I think we started to build a little bit off of that game. And then once we started conference play, I mean, it was obvious that we had a freshman point guard. It was obvious that there were times that we couldn't afford foul trouble because we our, our bigs were – we were pretty thin in the paint. I mean, the, the players that mm-hmm. played did a good job, but when it got to, you know, the 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 inexperienced ones that came in off the bench, um, we didn't have the production there. So I think it just took some time and, and learning how to play in foul trouble, doing some of those things that really playing time is the only thing that fixes that. Quick, quick follow-up to that. You know, you mentioned a little bit about last offseason, kind of doing things differently. Have you seen that camaraderie be different now that you returned basically – Oh, you know, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's been different is just carryover. You know, I mean, we, we, again, last year we brought back two players that really understood the system very well at all. And now you're talking about a team that didn't lose anybody in the portal. 
uh, gain three freshmen that I think are very talented. I mean, they're, they're freshmen and they have their freshman days, but they're talented. Uh, but I think the biggest difference is having Haley Atwood come back for a fifth year and Kira White. You know, I mean, those are two really experienced guards that are mature. They have great leadership skills. Um, they can show the young ones what, you know, summertime is about. Like when this is when you work on your shot. This is when you do extra work in the gym. And I think they've been really good examples for our young guys. Yeah. Uh, you kind of mentioned that that Houston game. Uh, Ish and I, it was you on the women's side, it was UTSA and Houston. Y'all two were like two of the teams that we were like, these teams are really like they're better than their record. They're they're tough defensively. Houston ended the season with I don't know how many games decided by like five points or less. It was some ridiculous number. Um, but now we get to see all play in the American or no, well, Houston's going to the Big Twelve. But well, they're regardless. And, I will tell you that we're working on a on a home and home as we speak. Uh, we have really struggled with our schedule this year. We can't get anybody to come into the into the convo and play us. So um, we're 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 working on it right now. We have one game left in our schedule, and I think we're potentially going to play them again. Which I, you know, I think it's a it's a great game. I, I hope that we become oh, competitive. Yeah. They feel like it's a good game, uh, but it's definitely a good one for us. Yeah, we we joked and said that needs to be the Dave Campbell's uh, classic there. Yeah, to, we we loved yeah both the alls teams. Um, Absolutely. Looking at uh, Jordan Jenkins, obviously. An, an all-conference player. I mean, we knew she was going to be awesome when you were able to get her, um, but ends the year, you know, 20.6 points, seven and a half boards, 50% shooting. Um, did did she surprise you at all with how, I mean, just efficient she was with how impactful she was? And then, I mean, just how was she also for the development of everybody else on the team? Uh, I wouldn't say that she surprised me. Uh, I had a previous relationship with her, so I recruited her when I was in Texas. Um, you know, she's just improved so much since I had seen her, you know, as a high school player. Um, you know, I mean, obviously I watched film on her from USC, but to see her in person, and I, I think efficiency is the word you would use for Jordan. I mean, it's just she's so – her footwork is so good, and – her feel for the game is, is really, really good. And just to have somebody like that. And I mean, you mentioned those stats and what's amazing about those stats is that they were, you know, everybody's game plan. Yeah. Once we got into conference play and in particular, the second half of conference play was to rough her up, to be honest with you, see if they could get her frustrated, mm -hmm. uh, see if they could play her physical double or um, And so a lot of those stats, uh, and again, I mean, she was conference player of the year and, and just shows you the respect that the coaches had for her. And then uh, real quick, you, you had the freshman class. You kind of mentioned uh, returning all of them. But last year to watch Sydney Love and Alexis Parker and Madison Cockrell to kind of go through those learning curves, the battles, the close wins, close losses. Uh, what did you see from them um, and how impactful, uh, you know, will they be in uh, the coming years? Well, they're going to be extremely impactful. I mean, I you know, they're they're players that, came here to try to elevate this program and grow it. Uh, and I think they're pretty serious about it. And I'll start with Sid. I mean, you know, Sydney is a player that started at the point position from day one and, you know, had a, had a stretch where she got injured, didn't play for a couple of weeks and stepped right back in that spot. Uh, really. And it was almost like she took a deep breath and was like, I'm good. I'm okay. And then when she came back, uh, she had a great second half of the conference season and a great conference tournament. Uh, Madison, has become like they're kind of a one-two punch at the point guard position. Maddie's grown up a lot. I mean, she she had a, 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 a knee injury midway through conference play that kept her out for a little bit also. So I think they're both healthy. Um, they're both just so much more confident in what they're doing. I mean, it's amazing the difference between a freshman and a sophomore. Lex is more confident. They're stronger. Um, I mean, I can say that about all five of them. Miss Sienna Gudadoro is definitely uh, – you know, just a different, they're all different players. My Linton, it's like a completely different kid this year. So I think that it's it's just that old saying, guys. I mean, the best thing about a freshman is they become a sophomore. And it's absolutely the truth. I mean, they just, you know, at some point they they take a deep breath and they're like, okay, I can do this. I'm good. And I know what to expect every day. And they really look like that right now. Yeah. I don't know how much you, you know, weigh into 
accolades or things like that. But, you know, somebody like a Sydney Love who ends the year, we mentioned with the conference tournament, you guys pick up two huge wins in the tournament, um, something the program is not really used to. And of course, she's a huge part of that. I think she dropped 20 points in one of those games. Um, you know, is she on, is she, do you think she's going to be in the discussion this year for an all conference type of type of point guard? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I hate to say that, that that I think she can or can't. I mean, I, I think she's sure. enormously talented, and what I love about her is that we can move her around. She's got the IQ to be able to move around in different spots on the floor. Same thing with Kira. I mean, sometimes we'll move Kira up to the point, put Sid at the two, and mm -hmm. uh, just because Sid is one of our better shooters, so I, I just think that she's a winner, you know. And and I haven't seen this league, so it's hard for me to jump out there and say she's an off conference sure. player. Uh, but I mean, I, I think it is a very talented league and, you know, I haven't seen the point guards. Uh, so I think it's a little bit of a unknown, but she just carried so much. You mentioned the conference tournament and I mean, she really yeah. carried the tournament um, and just the confidence that she came back here with this summer. And, and I mean, she's always the best conditioned kid in the gym. I mean, she is mm -hmm. from day one, Sydney love has been the best conditioned player on our team, which is really phenomenal. Um, she, She's very serious about what she does as, as a point guard and as a basketball player. I mean, she's that boy about everything in her life, and I I think she'll be successful. Um, it'll just you know it'll be a little bit of an unknown right now. I'm not seeing the league. Yeah. Now looking at this year as we start to to move into this season, um, like you said, you return so much talent. Um, to obviously not lose a lot in the transfer portal. Um, and then you know, bring in a freshman class uh, the way y'all did. And then obviously return Jordan Jenkins, return Kier White, so on and so forth. Just for you, where is the first area that you're like, all right, this is where we need to take the steps forward necessary to get over 500 in conference to really then start competing with these new uh, teams in the, in the American. Yeah, I think the the obvious is winning close games. I mean, if you look at our games from last year, there were so many that we led the whole game or we led most of it, and then all of a sudden, the last two or three minutes, we would make mistakes, um, either defensive mistakes or, you know, turn the ball over, not execute down the stretch. So I think when you look at that, hopefully the experience of Sydney and the rest of those young guys, uh, Kira having so much more um, sureness about what her role is and – She's just, I mean, Kira is really, really um, a confident player right now. She looks completely different than she did when she arrived here. And I, I just think that we'll be more confident down the stretch. We'll be more sure of what we're doing. And if we can, you know, win close games, uh, I, I think our defense, our rebounding is going to keep us in games because that's that's who we are, as you, as you noticed. <laughs> Uh, it is who we are and what we'll do. But, you know, I think there's little things like we, we have to find some solutions to when Jordan's in foul trouble. Mm -hmm. That was a problem for us last mm -hmm. year. She's not in the game. Uh, let's not, you know, lean on her so much that we don't know what to do when she's not in the game. Uh, but I do think that there are – we have more players that can play – uh, at that four and five position than we did last year. So I, I think we'll have more choices and hopefully um, can combat foul trouble and those types of things, fatigue, those types of things that happen in games. And then I think the last thing probably is just to figure out how to play at a, at a higher pace. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's you know, hard for a young player. Uh, and, you know, Sydney was kind of used to walk it down and somebody go set a ball screen for me and I'm going to score every time I get it. That was kind of how she played in high school because no one could really stop her. Uh, and I think just to figure out how to play at a, at a, at a pace that, that we really need to learn how to play at. Speaking of uh, a player in high school, you know, I was a big fan of the Emma Lucio when, uh, when I found out that you guys signed her, you know, what did you see coming out of Robert Vela um, that made you kind of want to make her one of your uh, linchpins going forward? Yeah, she's just got a, a a feel for the game that I really, really like. I mean, she can do a bunch of different things. She's got a great jump shot for a young kid. Uh, she can shoot the three. She's a lefty. Um, just does a lot of things offensively. Now, I will tell you, she's a little overwhelmed right now. So this is mm -hmm. this is a completely different environment than what she's been in and sure. uh, far away from home. And it's going to yeah. take her dust. Uh, but I, if she'll just hang in there, 
you know, I, I think she's going to be a, a really good player for us but just because she, you know, she can score the ball. I mean, I love wing players that can use ball screens and, you know, jump up and shoot a jumper if that's what someone gives you or get to the rack and, and, you know, obviously if they go under it, you can hit a three. And I think she's capable of the three levels. Uh, it's just going to take some time. I mean, I don't want to put any unrealistic expectations on her. I mean, it's a completely sure. different level play day in and day out and it's an adjustment for her, but I will yeah. say that the other freshman Asia Proctor is another one of those guards from local, you know, she's a San Antonio mm -hmm. kid that I think is going to be a really special guard here. Uh, and then Idara Udo is a post player that, uh, you guys are going to love. I mean, she's, she's, um, she's a true post, uh, she's mm -hmm. from Plano East, a uh, true post player that has a really high motor. So I, I just think she's going to contribute very quickly for us. Kind of bouncing off that, that last point of Vidara Udo, uh, if we just look at the, the post players you have this year compared to last year around Jordan Jenkins and Elisa Coleman, Idara Duro, Idara Duro, Idara Udo, sorry, I can't speak. Uh, che Cheyenne Rowe uh, is the only transfer in from James Madison. And then uh, Nisa Sam Grant, who did not play last year. And then this year, I don't know her situation. That's why, you know, we have you on to clarify. Ready to, She's ready to so there you go. So, that's three players right there that are six one and over. Um, do you feel like that could potentially become a strength now as you kind of look at the potential of the front court? Well, if you look at my track record, you know that I love post players. Um, yes. it, funny story about me that most people don't know is that when I was an assistant at the University of Texas, my position, I was a position coach, obviously most people are, and the post yeah. players were my position. So I fell in love with that position. Um, I, I just love players that don't mind, you know, getting dirty yeah. and uh, doing work. And, I, you know, the, the, the first thing that I noticed when we had our first workout as a group this summer that just jumped out at me was our size as opposed to what it has been the last two years. And I'm not saying, we're, you know, we're going to be there immediately. They're young players that need to learn the system. But, um, you know, we're just bigger. I mean, we had Maya Linton and Kylie McGuire that came off the bench last year at you know, six foot five eleven, mm -hmm. that were playing sometimes the five. I mean, they mm -hmm. they had to just come in when we needed them at whatever position, and now they're at their true spot. And it's crazy when you look down there; like they look like they look like little girls compared to <laughs> other players. So, uh, and they've improved a lot because they've been able to hone in really on what they need to be doing uh, yeah. in their skill set. So, um, I think we'll be deeper. I mean, again, these guys need to get playing time and figure it all out, but we, we'll definitely be deeper. Uh, last one for me, at least, you know, we mentioned a little bit about Haley Atwood and Alyssa Coleman, two players who have played under you since you've gotten there, right? Now they're still with you. Um, yeah. You know, what 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 growth have you seen from them? Because obviously we kind of saw the signs of what was getting built your first year, but, you know, it may be hard to relay to them as they're taking, you know, they're not necessarily winning games that first year. Last year, you kind of have that proof of concept, you know. Has has have you seen kind of like the development in them kind of like go with the program as well? Well, I mean, I can't say enough about Haley Atwood. Um, you know, what she does for and what she has done for this basketball program will never show up on any any stat sheet, mm -hmm. any piece. Of paper. I mean, she's just a phenomenal young woman, uh, you know, got her degree in criminal justice, has won graduate school this year. She's won. You know, she was Conference USA Scholar Athlete of the Year in all sports. Um, you know, she won a Team Impact Award, National Team Impact Award for how much work she did outside the lines uh, with a young girl that we sort of adopted that was battling cancer. And it was all like all Haley. Uh, mm -hmm. Her leadership just I mean, I say this all the day, like a person that just like puts their shoes on and goes to work every day uh, is a priceless um, commodity for a coach. And, you know, Haley's that person. And so to have really her, um, Elissa, you know, understands what I expect every day. She's matured so much. Uh, and then Kylie McGuire, all three of those guys have been here with me since I've been here. And, you know, you can tell, I mean, they, you know, they don't bat an eye. They understand what I expect every day. They've been able to branch out and, you know, grow as young women. And uh, I couldn't be prouder of 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 any of them as, as, you know, any players, as much as I am those three, just for like digging in and going, okay, we're going to make this better when 
you know, we didn't know if we were going to win a game the first year and it's been, it's been fun to watch. Sure. I I do want to go back real quick. We, we've talked about this year, but the, the stretch to close the season, um, obviously you win six of the last seven, you win 10 of your last 14 pretty much. Uh, and you return the players from that. Do, do you feel like that positive momentum, that winning to close the year has been kind of infectious over this off season been like, all right, cause you don't, the players are like, all right, we don't know how far we can take this, but if we buy in, if we do what we need to do, like there's a real chance we can get even more successful this season. Well, I definitely think it gave them a taste, you know, of what postseason play is supposed to feel like. I mean, last year, the year before we won a game, and you would have thought we won the national championship. I mean, that was it, it was absolutely one of the best moments I've ever had as a coach when those kids yeah. won their uh, – last year it was almost like, okay, we think we, we're supposed to win the first game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then we played Rice in the second game, and it was such an emotional win for us um, just because we – you know, the game went back and forth. We were down. Uh, Jordan's in foul trouble. And so, you know, coming back and winning that game – I have to say this. I think the best lesson that they learned is how to prepare for the next one, you know, because we won the two games and now we're in the semifinals against Western. And I think Western knew how to play that game better than we did. I think they knew how to prepare. I think they knew how to be there in the moment better than we did. And I think that is what they're going to carry over is like, okay, this is what one game at a time feels like. Don't get too high, don't get too low. But, you know, as a coach, you're like, you have to let them experience this. I mean, it's not anything you can you can really dictate when they've never been there before. So I, I definitely think that, I mean, I will say that I think had we gone into, you know, had we been in the same league, they would have had a really clear understanding of like, here, this is where we are. This is who we have to mm. a beat to be, finish in the top three or four. This is that, you know, middle would have been picked to win it again. I mean, we all know like kind of how it would have went. <laughs> Whereas now we're going to this new league. They don't know anything. Um, And I hate that kind of for them because I think we were really establishing ourselves. But on the flip side of that, you know, I I think they'll enjoy the new league. Yeah, we're all trying to figure out uh, how good the American is in football, basketball, everything. It's it's all a different animal. Every league right now, right? Exactly. (laughs) That's a good point. Exactly. (laughs) Every league is, is like that. But Coach, uh, I think that's all we have for you. All, all we have for you. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on and talking to us. This is a lot of fun. Well, I appreciate it. Anytime, guys. All right, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank Love you. Up.